Welcome back, folks. So today I want to talk about loads. And uh, I don't mean loads as in truck loads. I'm talking about loads we use in electronics. You see them in block diagrams of electronic systems all the time as the, the target of many of the different systems we work with, like power supplies, signal generators, amplifiers, transmitters, whatever. You know, anything that produces a, an amount of power or a signal of some kind usually drives that power or signal into a load. And in, in their simplest form, loads can be, you know, some, they can be resistive, they can be inductive, they can be capacitive, they could be dynamic. Uh, even plain old short circuits and open circuits can be considered test loads, if you want to know how the circuit works under those conditions. In, in real life, though, load behavior is typically more complex, and it's usually some or any combination of the above-mentioned characteristics especially in, in cases where AC is involved in frequency changes. These loads can get quite complex. They can be and almost are very dynamic, uh, you know, like a motor or a light bulb or a speaker. Uh, but even even more simple loads, like you might think of a, just a resistor as just, just a very, very simple load. And, you know, some under some conditions they are, but under different conditions, as frequencies go up or as uh, temperature changes, they change. In real life, they can be dynamic, but they have a, a group of uh, consistent uh, ca characteristics like constant voltage, constant resistance, or they can exhibit characteristics for looking at crest factors or power factors or frequency response or key. And the study of real world loads, uh, the information that we want to extract from using them and how we design them for specific test goals. You could get postdoctoral work for the, in that and do research. It's very important stuff for electronics. However, you know, all that aside, you know, we're just hobbyists and our needs may be a little easier to grab a hold of. So in a simplest form, a load in electronics is a test instrument, even though it might just be a resistor or something like that, designed to sync current and absorb the output of some signal source, whether that be DC, AC, RF, whatever. Now, for instance, uh, you know, if you had a power supply and that power supply is used to power a particular device, that uh, device might have certain characteristics. So you put a load on it similar to those characteristics to test the power supply. So let's say that power supply is just going to be driving a digital circuit that draws a constant current of five amps all the time. It doesn't change. It's, a, it's some sort of computer humming in the background doing something. So you want to test to see if your power supply can supply that five amps continuously under the temperature conditions and everything else you're going to be using that circuit for. You know, and an amateur radio operator might want to test a transmitter without causing all sorts of interference. So he's going to want to get some sort of non-radiative load. So usually something like a very mostly ohmic resistor load would be ideal for that. You may want to just test the capacity of a battery or a supercapacitor. I've done that in some of my videos. So these are amongst uh, the, the many valid reasons for a hobbyist to have a, an assortment of loads that they can use for uh, the different experiments they do. So yeah, let's let's go downstairs and I'll show you some of the loads that I have and I've built up over time or, or bought. And uh, I'll, I'll give you some idea of what they can do and uh, how I use them. Okay, here we are. I've got some of the things I've used actually recently as loads. Now these here, these here are all resistors. So they're very nice in the fact that they're pretty linear uh, with respect to the current you get out of them depending on the voltage you put into them. In fact, if we look here, uh, here's a plot that uh, I made of this particular resistor here. And we can see here that uh, we have a voltage along the bottom here, current and resistance up the top here. And this uh, heavier line here is the current. And you can see how it changes very linearly with respect to the voltage going into it very predictable and if we do if we do the ratio along according to Ohm's law we get a nice straight line as to the actual resistance of the device even though this thing did warm up uh, uh, quite a bit along the way as we went up and further and further and further here uh, they are made with this with a wire that reduces the thermal coefficient to it's not zero but it's it's pretty good so the, these can be relied on and any one of these here would uh, fit those needs. Now, there are issues with them. Uh, first of all, these big wire wound ones like this and this and this, 
are very sensitive to frequency. So as the frequency goes up, their behavior changes dramatically. They're basically just big coils. Even these ones here, like these metal film ones, they're pretty dependent upon frequency as well. Not as much as these because of their construction, but they do have a kind of a, a coil-like structure in them, which is trimmed as to width and stuff like that in order to get the, uh, the desired resistance. But they, these can have a very high inductance as well, especially up in higher frequencies. Not as badly as something like these here which, uh, be, you know, the, the frequency going into them gets much above a few kilohertz and th their resistance changes. There are special resistors you can get and you have to look for them. They, they usually come in like TO220 packages or something like that. They're specifically designed to have very low inductance. But just be aware of that, you know, if, if you use these, the nice thing about these is they can be used for DC and AC, but be aware that the AC is limited in respect to the frequency depending on the construction of the resistor. And uh, so these are, these are what I call a very, very linear loads, like resistive loads that tend to be very linear, especially with DC. Not only limited to, to devices like this, by the way. So if you happen to have something at home of this nature, let me get this in here. So this is just a little space heater. This one here has got three different ranges on it, including fan only. So you can, you can actually get four different settings here as, as a load. And you might laugh at this, but they're actually pretty good. I mean, they're, they're, they're designed to work at 120 volts. They're very high wattage. Uh, this particular one here is up to 1500 watts on the high end. So this is 25 ohms in that position here. And we go up to the next highest position. This switch is a little bit crunchy. So it goes down to 13, 14 ohms. And then in the highest position here, you get down to 9.6. So this, these actually do make a handy load. And uh, in this 9.6 ohm position here, you could use this as a load for a big audio amplifier. So I'm belting out a couple of hundred watts. It'll never even make this thing warm. And it'll provide a good consistent load without waking your neighbors down the street. This load here is rated at 250 watts. That's uh, between these two terminals here. So as you bring it down, if you're connecting up between here, as you bring it down here, the wattage goes down. You bring it down halfway, it's at half. You bring it down a quarter of the way, it's at one quarter. So you gotta keep that in mind. This at, at full tilt here will take about two amps. And that's what I have built in here. So you can, you can take something like that and leave, use it that way. You can put it in here. I put a meter in it and a fuse to protect it so that I can see when I'm approaching the two, two and a half amps or whatever. And uh, yeah, that way uh, you protect these things. They're not cheap. I mean, even the these cheap ones from China are about 30 or 40 dollars. So you don't want to be blowing them up. And so loads, loads like this, I'll use them for power supplies. I'll use them for audio amplifiers. So these are great for that sort of thing where you want a nice predictable linear response to voltage. You know, these ones over here, these here are not power loads, the more um, signal loads. These are all designed to terminate transmission lines. So these are all 50 ohm. This one here has got a little SMA connector. These ones here, BNC connectors on them. This one here would go into an oscilloscope. You would put the, this part in the oscilloscope and you bring in the BNC cable in this way. This thing here would terminate a length of cables. I got this way back when ethernet networks were all connected together using coax cable. And this was just like an end terminator. And you can still use that in a, in a long run, looping a signal through various different devices. You just get to the end, you want to terminate it. Handy for that. This one here, I got uh, specifically to test little transmitters. So that's, that's kind of load, which has got nothing to do with uh, terminating power, but terminating a transmission line. Uh, they are sensitive to power though. I mean, these have specific power ratings on them. And then here we have a couple of, of what I call dynamic loads. Sometimes you want to test a device that's going to, to control a load that has a, a very dynamic personality, like a motor, a relay, or a lamp. Uh, these things don't behave normally. They don't, there's nothing linear about them. Motors and relays have huge big energy releases when the, when the motor changes coils or when the relay is released. They are very inductive so that the current flow is initially very slow and then speeds up. The same with this, although you think of a, a bulb as a resistive element. So here's a truly resistive element or as close as we can get to it. And you can see that this is very, very straight and this is flat and straight. Here is the equivalent curves for a light bulb. 
and uh, it should be noted that this this will come down here and probably cross around about there. I think I measured the static resistance. Well, let's, let's measure it right now. Okay, so we'll take a, a relative measurement here. And... So yeah, it's about 150 milliohms when it's cold. And you can see here that by the time we're up to half an amp, we're already up to about half an ohm. So this would cross uh, right about down here when the current goes right down. The current will will shoot down here to zero. Of course, at, at zero voltage through, it, it's going to be zero current. The current will rise up very quickly and then start to level out. So you can see both the resistance of the device and the current of the device change with the amount of voltage that's going through it. So they're not nearly as predictable. However, if you want to model something like that, it's a little bit more difficult, even with an active load, to model that. So generally speaking, an incandescent bulb is great as a load for an incandescent bulb, and a motor is great as a load for a, something controlling a motor. And the same with a relay. They're very, these are very dynamic loads, and they're, they're best handled by using a, a device similar to the one you're going to use in the long run. Yeah, you can use these as loads. I've seen people use them as loads, but as long as you realize that uh, you're not going to get a linear response, and sometimes that doesn't matter. Sometimes you you just want to test to see if a power supply will produce enough current, or you want to look at the ripple coming out of the power supply. They are the passive loads. So you have these ones here for transmission lines, these ones here that are ohmic or resistive loads, and these ones here that are fairly dynamic. So let's start looking at a few active loads. Okay, so here's the first active load I'd, I'd like to show you. This is, just a, this is just a little DC load that I built up to test some batteries one time. And it's before, before I got this. This is now the little thing I, I use for testing batteries. And I'll show you this in a minute. But this is just a, a MOSFET here. Here's, here's the circuit diagram. So I've got this uh, FQP50N06 MOSFET. Which is a, pretty nice MOSFET. I've got this uh, resistor along here. It's a 0.2 ohms at 18 watts. And this is the sensing resistor. So that I bring that up here, it goes into the uh, negative side of the op amp. And then uh, down here, I have the controls, you know, the fine controls, the main control, and then a limiting resistor up here to go into the positive side of the op amp. That's basically the circuit. Anybody can build one of these up in a few minutes with a handful of parts for a couple of dollars. It's, it doesn't take much. And you get a, a really nice little variable DC load. So right down to the minimum here, we can get down to practically zero current. That's the fine control there. And then we can put it anywhere we want. So we can control that very nicely. And this normally would have a fan on it. You really would want to, to do that. But anyway, that, that's it. That's how that works. That's a, it's, it just uses the MOSFET to control the voltage. And it uses the op amp to sense the error between what you're putting in here and what's being generated across this uh, sense resistor here, which is that big one. And a very, very simple device, very easy to make. If you do make one, I've seen a lot of people put them together and, and not put in some little capacitor here. I mean, you could even put in a capacitor here. I didn't, but it's probably a good idea. But just a small capacitor, and that's why these resistors are here. You could, you could actually just eliminate those resistors, eliminate this capacitor, but then you stand the chance of the whole thing just turning into a, you know, a res relatively high frequency oscillator and burning itself up. So I just put in these two resistors here, 4K7, both of them, and a 0.1 UF capacitor here, just to limit the high frequencies. Basically it reduces the gain of the operation amplifier down to nothing if the frequencies get too high. I'm thinking of actually uh, doing a little project on it, maybe another one with the help of the PCPWay folks, to build uh, a better version of this so other people can throw it together themselves. Let me know down in the, the comments if you want me to proceed with that. I think a lot of people would like to be able to build a proper variable DC load. Let's get on to the next one here, which is this little one here. So I stopped, basically stopped using this one. I got this instead. Now this is, this is based around a commercially available module. I'll just put it in this little case. I put a little power supply in it to power it. 
and uh, I did a video on this. So I'll, I'll leave a link to that video up there and you can go back and look at that where I detail what I did and why I did it. It does keep track of the watt hours and stuff like that. So it's really, really ideal for testing things out like batteries, power consumption over time, supercapacitors, whatever. And in fact, I think I, I used this in a video on a supercapacitor that I got and tested it out and it came out to be right on. So this would be kind of the next level up from something like this. But let me uh, just take you to show you what else I have. Uh, it's sort of like on the really high end here. Well, this is the other load I have in my lab here. This is the uh, this is the load built by Siglent. And uh, this is pretty high end, it's fully programmable. So um, if you had something like this, you could actually program it to behave like a light bulb. But this is not everybody's cup of tea. Well over $600 when I bought this thing and honestly, Tell you the truth, I don't use it all that much. I do use it. Uh, don't get me wrong. I use it in testing the power supply that I recently built. I've used it in testing other power supplies that I've got in here. And, but these are extremely versatile instruments. They will do constant current, constant voltage, constant resistance, constant power. And on top of that, you can program into curves into them. You can get all sorts of information out of them. You can monitor all sorts of different things. They're incredibly complex and versatile devices. Again, like I said, not necessarily everybody's cup of tea. So anyway, that's it guys. Uh, I just wanted to show you a little about loads. Uh, they, they come up all the time in, in, in a lot of the forums I go to on, on the internet that people talk about, I'm doing this, I want that, Can I? what can I use for a load and stuff like that. And these are basically the things that I use as loads and I use them all the time. Uh, having a, a selection of, of things you can use to load down signal generators and amplifiers and power supplies and transmitters and whatnot is extremely handy for being able to service them and test them and just play around with them. So I hope you got something out of this folks. Thank you a lot for coming out. Subscribe if you haven't. Give me a thumbs up and we'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.